Hey everybody, this is Jim Prusak, physical therapist from the Pain PT. How are you guys doing today? I have a guest here today. I'm really happy to have Robert here. Robert Enzer on the call. Robert, how are you doing? Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, Jim. Yeah, thanks. I knew you communicated with me and um, wanted to share your story, your success story. And I know you mentioned that Rebecca Tolan, who I know really well, contributed to a book that you wrote around this. So we'll talk about that at the end, but I'm yeah. really looking forward to hearing your story of, um, you know, what happened to you, where you came from and where you are now. So I'm just going to turn it over to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, it's a very long and complicated story, so I will endeavor to give you the short version. Um, since childhood, I'd had food intolerances and uh, hip and back pain and other symptoms simmering in the background. Um, but it didn't get really bad until February 2019. And um, I just finished writing a novel and my back hurt terribly getting out of a chair and uh, the pain persisted for weeks. So I went to see an osteopath and um, she thought I had ankylosing spondylitis. Um, you know, I Googled it as people do and um, pretty much agreed the symptoms seemed to fit. And um, so that wasn't an official medical diagnosis, but um, I kind of diagnosed myself at that point. And with autoimmune disease, mainstream medicine says, you will see on the internet, they're incurable and um, they just want to manage the inevitable decline with um, with medication. Um, I I didn't accept that. Um, so the main alternative is um, the autoimmune paleo diet or functional medicine approach, which involves um, using diet to starve out bad bacteria, which is alleged to be the cause of the disease. Um, so I, I chose the diet approach because they do have success stories. I mean, they have people who control the symptoms, who have few or no symptoms, provided they stick to a, a very strict regimen. Um, so yeah, I, I went down the diet route. I started um, dropping various foods from my diet, um, started with lactose, and I felt better, you know, and, um, and then, uh, but then I, it, you know, it led to an unhealthy obsession with food and the overall trajectory was downward. I was overall getting worse and I had to drop more and more foods from my diet, um, to get this temporary placebo relief, but nonetheless, I was still getting worse over time. And, um, I just like to, to give you an idea of what a wreck I was, um, not my worst. I just like to read out a, um, a list of my symptoms. So if that's okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, so there's a lot of them. So yeah, severe chronic hip and back pain, uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, um, anxiety, depression, gingivitis, uh, lactose, starch, egg, Soy, onion, nightshade, artificial sweetener, and citrus intolerance. So almost everything, basically. Yeah. Um, diarrhea, constipation, headaches, severe chronic fatigue, cold intolerance, um, massive foot swelling at one point, urinary pain, dizziness, uh, wrist and hand pain, hemorrhoids, and an anal fissure. Mm. So um, that yeah, quite I, covers I, covers the body, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, everywhere, completely systemic. Um, so eventually I went to see a doctor and um, there was a lot of pointless tests, but five doctors ultimately thought I had autoimmune disease. This, this is provisional diagnosis. Um, they were mentioning um, Crohn's was the leading candidate, but celiac was also mentioned as a possibility. One doctor said I was um, the worst autoimmune patient he had ever seen which was uh, great to hear, you know. <laughs> With a lot um, of confidence, right? To... Yeah, a real, a real boost of confidence there. Um, eventually, I got referred to a gastroenterologist, and he wanted to do a gastroscopy and an x-ray. But both of these were cancelled due to the lockdown uh, during the pandemic. Um, but I was actually glad, because um, every time I saw a doctor, I, I got worse. I mean, just the talking, the concern noises and the talking about all these incurable conditions. 
um, kind of gave me some negative expectations. Um, so by that point, I wanted to go it alone. Um, but yeah, I mean, at my worst, it got to the point where I could only eat a thousand calories a day of almond milk, mushrooms and cucumbers hmm. um, for four months because I reacted so terribly with back and hip pain and hmm. digestive symptoms to all other foods. And um, for one doctor's appointment, I needed a wheelchair to get around the hospital because I couldn't go further than about 200 feet due to the pain. Um Mm -hmm. so I, I was really desperate at this point and um you know before all this i was basically agnostic um but i was so desperate that i um i prayed you know i i promised christ i would spread whatever message he wanted me to spread if i recovered and shortly after that um i got re i was recommended um by amazon john sarno's book healing back pain um so i bought it you know it's it's a sh it's a short book um and i read in the reviews that some people had healed just by reading it so i figured well wouldn't that be great and i, I was willing to give anything a try um but i i didn't read it straight away i left it on my nightstand for two months that's a typical uh, story isn't it yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah we've heard this many times and um yeah i i couldn't um I couldn't quite get my head around the idea that all of the symptoms were psychogenic, that it all originated in the mind. Um, and the other thing was he's talking about chronic pain. I had auto, I thought I had autoimmune disease. Um, so I didn't really think it applied to me until I had a dream. And in the dream, I was on a podcast holding up Sarno's book. I've got one here, mind body prescription. Yep. And I was holding up the book in the dream saying, you know, the diet, so diet approach is okay, but this is better. Mm. So I figured, well, you know, my unconscious couldn't really get more obvious. Um, yeah. Give me, your, that was interesting. You had that. It's great when you can have those uh, kind of insights or clues or intuitions. Yeah, it, it was really obvious. I mean, um, in, because of the dream. And so I, yeah, I, I started reading the book after that. And um, Sarno's main concept, as you know, is that pain and fear distract from repressed emotions. Uh, if you accept the pain is a distraction from the unconscious and resume normal activities, you'll be okay. And um, so, yeah, I, I like the sound of this. And uh, But it wasn't until I applied it to myself that I really started to improve. Yeah. Uh, and one day I went on a on a walk with my mom, um, talked about repressed emotions, and I managed to walk um, three and a half miles, which was a massive improvement for me. And um, from that point on, the cat was out of the bag. You know, I knew I knew this approach would work for me. So up uh, until that point of walk walking three and a half miles, prior to that, you hadn't been walking any sort of distance at that point, or did you jump I, I, miles or did you build yourself up to that point? Well, but yeah, it's, it's a very complicated story because before I, um, before I found Sarno, I had, I'd read Carl Jung and, and this whole idea of, um, where the fear is, there is your task, you know, go into the fear. Um, and so I'd started to push myself and I could walk a mile or two. Um, so there, there was a bit of a gradual build up, but um, Sarno was the real eureka moment for me. Yeah. And okay. um, so, yeah, I mean, from there, I, I improved gradually. I um, Every week I walked a bit further and ate a bit more. And uh, you just gradually... kind of from just the highlight for the people listening, mm -hmm. watch yeah. the, you read Sarno's book and you just had it in your mind at that point that this is psychogenic. This is my mind. And you just kind of kept yourself there as you went forward. Did you did you go back to uh, reading the book to remind yourself, or what did you just remind yourself in your mind? What did you do as you were moving forward? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I just got such a dramatic improvement in symptoms by applying by thinking about repressed emotions and talking about them yeah. on that walk. But it was just okay. That so that's good to highlight that to people. So you were you were almost processing your emotions while you walked, you kind of did two things at once. You increased your activity and you were working on releasing emotions. Yeah, I, I was focused on the emotions. I didn't even think about the pain while I was doing that. Yep. And that Correct. enabled me to walk much further. Um, okay. And um, yeah, I mean, 
it was uh it just that was a kind of piece of evidence that i used against that i used against myself in moments of doubt it's like well look you walk this far pretty fast with not much pain obviously while talking about these things i mean obviously it's, it's psychosomatic and when you and, just so people know because people a lot of people are working on their emotions which is the critical piece for recovery were you just saying doing this in your mind or were you talking out loud or were you what were you uh how were oh, you a bit yeah a bit of both i mean sometimes you know i would i would say in conversation and sometimes i, I just think it yeah okay. uh, but the, the the closest i came to getting really da- uh, rattled and having a moment of doubt was um when my foot swelled up and it was quite a dramatic swelling uh let me tell you i it, i struggled and then the other foot swelled up and i struggled yeah. it was so bad i struggled to put my shoes on wow um, and you had never had that before that just came like oh no, no. out of the blue there was no actual cause or anything you could put your finger on no um <laughs> And uh, basically, yeah, I, I instantly kind of knew that it was symptom imperative because of Sano's description. Yeah. Uh, you, you basically um, see past one distraction and you get another one thrown at you on, in the process of recovery. And um, so, yeah, I, I decided, OK, well, maybe we need to try something different. And um, I did some journaling. I started journaling about grief because my dad died um, when I was 19 of ALS. So there was a lot of, I had repressed it. Um, so I journaled about that. And within 10 minutes of journaling about that um, in very you know blunt terms, um, my foot deflated. It was as if someone- That's unbelievable. Had- yeah, that, I think just to highlight that for everybody listening, because people wonder about certain symptoms saying, well, that's not, that's not a psychosomatic symptom. I mean, your foot blew up and I've seen this before yeah, yeah. With people, like literally, and you think, no way is that my mind. And it literally deflated like a balloon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, it's like, like putting a pin in a whoopee cushion. And, yeah. Uh, went back to almost, almost normal in 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I gradually built up from there, reintroduced foods and expanded my uh, range of motion, did more exercise. And now I fully recovered. Um, I can eat. How much eat- journaling did you do? Just for people out there to know how much, how long did you journal? Oh, a lot. A lot. Um, yeah. I, I overdid it, to be perfectly honest, and I turned it into a kind of a replacement ritual that replaced the uh, the diet regimen. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I overdid it because I did it for fifteen months. You know. Yeah. And, okay. So fifteen uh, months I, I of journaling daily. You did it daily, but yeah. obviously you were getting stuff out because you were making progress. And yeah, it was, it was helpful. Yeah. But um, one point I want to make is that. Um, most of Sano's patients didn't need journaling or psychotherapy. I mean, they healed by believing the knowledge that he gave them by just ignoring the pain and resuming normal activities. And knowing it could be done just by believing it can be done can be for some people a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. And yeah. that's that's why his books heal. You know, just pe- uh, people heal just by reading them. Because he's saying you don't have to do anything except believe the words he's giving you. Yeah, and that, that's right. Yeah, it's it's tremendously um, the knowledge you don't have to do anything um, is very reassuring, simple and liberating. And you're basically, Sana, I just needed somebody to tell me that I was going to be OK. Um, right, right. And that's it. When you listen you, and it clicks in your mind and then, like you yeah. said, you just move forward with a bit more confidence and, and security. And mm. I always tell people the same thing. I said, hey, we're not trying to fix anything. All you're trying to do is teach your brain that you're okay, essentially. Yeah. You're going to be yeah. all right. Uh, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, Vinsano just tells us that we're going to be okay. And he, he gave, he gives me and an, an, gave me and others like me um, permission to heal, which um, is really the main thing I was looking for. Yeah. And how long was the process, uh, Robert, from the time you found Sarno's book? to the time where you felt like you kind of got back to your, to living again for you? Uh, about 15 months. Okay. So it's good for people to realize that. I always tell people, give yourself a year, two years of time. Don't put the timeline. It can be quicker, right? Or it could be longer. It just depends on the person. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I was pretty much 85, 90% there after about seven months. Yeah, and the whole time it was uh, the whole time it was kind of great because um, there was a consistent improvement. 
after that initial symptom imperative with the foot. Um, it was a yeah, it was a pretty consistent improvement, and um, it was just so liberating to be able to do things again. And, yeah, uh, that yeah. moment you had with your foot going down, I imagine, in terms of evidence to your brain, would have been quite strong. Yeah. Right, that yeah, was I mean, the aha there was, moment. There was, no, there was no doubt after that. Yeah, there's no doubt. That so that doubt was that's important because people still have doubt mm. in their minds, and that does potentially keep people stuck. Yeah, I think belief really is is the primary factor here, and um, belief is you know it's the common denominator in all healing because whatever method people use to heal, whether it's diets or surgery or meditation or journaling they they are using belief because they believe in their method so yeah. it, it is the, the common denominator um i agree, I agree. yeah and um i think the, the key to believing it is really to fully accept the uh, the tms diagnosis and uh, just accept that it's psychosomatic and that you have buried rage and and uh, get past the the shame stigma factor yeah i think that's really important um yeah and another point about belief that i'd like to make is that yeah i mean psychotherapy um for tms without belief in a mind uh, psychotherapy in general for people who have physical problems without belief in a mind body link usually has little effect yeah um I've seen that as well in people where they've been having years of psychotherapy yeah. and actually you know better in some ways you know emotionally of uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Your symptoms are still there. Yeah, and I, I think uh, that's um, Rebecca experienced that as well. I mean, she had therapy before she had the eureka moment, and it it didn't really do much to heal her physical symptoms. Um, right. So, I mean, what this tells us is that belief is the primary factor, really. Yeah, I'd say so. I, you know, when, when I my channel and the way I work with people, I've gone into neuroscience behind that now, and I think that's correct because of that part of our brain that the cortex is it's got all these neural connections to these other parts of the brain and your body directly that can literally inhibit or shut down the stuff you're talking about. And that comes from a belief, like a doctor reassures you, you read Sarno, you get these aha moments, man, that cuts deep into the brain with a strong signal to go, okay, yeah. you're going to be all right. You know, calm down. Yeah. And, yeah. And all the, the scientific explanations and the scientific evidence helps reinforce the belief. Um, yeah. But um, one thing I would like to say is that um, spiritual factors and belief came before everything else in my recovery. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I would just like to mention that. What role did that play just for you? Just, you know, personally, the spiritual factors. Well, I, I attribute the recovery to Christ, basically. And I think that's why I, I didn't get the um, afflicted with terrible doubt. You know, when I got symptom imperative, I think um, God gave me the belief to get through it yeah. because I, I had a, I had a mission. I had a purpose, um, yeah. you know, to, to tell my story and spread the word about psychosomatic illness and um, all these different things. Yeah, that's powerful. That's great. That, that's really that's really fantastic. So you 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 and you had done this on your own, right? You didn't. Uh have anybody help you other than reading Sarno's books? Did you do any other reading or work with anybody? Yeah. Else? Yeah. I, well, I, I didn't go to see anybody, but I read most of the uh, TMS books. I read um, Dr. Schubiner's book. I read, uh, it was terrific. Um, I read um, Mark Sofa's. I read Steve Ozanich's book. I, I read most of the TMS books and they, they all helped me, um, get rid of the faulty um medical ideas i had before yeah and kind of recondition me um yeah it was all helpful so you're back would you say at this point you're back to being normal to where you want you were before i mean where do you where are you at right now yeah i, I i've made a full recovery um yeah. yeah and take us again from the lows which was what bears barely moving right to what you're yeah. doing yeah, I mean, I, I could just about hobble up the stairs at night to get to bed. Um, and to go more than 200 feet, I'd need a wheelchair. And, you know, now I can um, I can eat practically anything. I mean, anything humanly edible. Um, <laughs> I, I actually eat a lot of junk food. And, um, 
you know, and um, and the other thing is, uh, I exercise more. Um, like today, I ran eight and a half miles. So just just awesome. to go, and, you know, just to give people an idea of what's possible. Yeah, I agree. The the human potential is unlimited, and you're just you're living proof of this process of shifting your mind and shifting your body, basically, right? Totally having a shift of belief and then also getting into some emotions too and looking at that. I mean, obviously the emotional piece was important too, because like you said, you had pretty strong evidence after journaling around your father, the grief of yeah. that just deflating. So there's that piece of the puzzle too. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think there is something behind the, the, the repression. I mean, there is a reason why these things get repressed and, um, Generally speaking, you know, perfectionists, Asano and many others have identified perfectionists as TMS prone personalities. Um, they, if, if you are trying to be perfect, it's generally to gain the approval of others to be liked. Um, and it's a fear of being disliked. Now, the, the fear of being disliked and the desire to be liked is part of being human, but it that is the root cause of all repression, I believe. Yeah, I would uh, say you're, least, you're right on there. Yeah. I, I would tend to agree with you. I think the, the underlying, least, yeah. Yeah, it leads to repression of everything socially undesirable, especially anger. Yeah. Uh, which then, you know, causes illness. Um, I would say so to that I, too, that the, the, the shame, the shame that people have is yeah. like root emotion to those patterns. And hidden in there is the anger, like you mentioned, the repressed rage and anger is hidden in there. But the shame is what, that's why we do these things because we don't want to be looked down upon or look bad upon or feel bad or less yeah. than. Yeah, so you're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I just think um, that maybe one of the diff the factors that made me a bit different is that I, I didn't particularly care that much about being popular so uh, it was e maybe easier for me to uh, to admit to some of the unpleasant emotions and um also to the fact that i had a psychosomatic illness yeah yeah so I think the, the conformity element can be a big obstacle for a lot of people yeah, the people pleasing, right? The fitting in, the yeah. perfectionism. How much did you come from any trauma background in your family? Um, well, I I got bullied severely at school, um, mm. and then and then there was the death of my father, and there was there was a lot of anger about the bullying, sure. and a lot of um about my my father's death, and those those were the two main emotional root causes, I would say. Yeah, when you when you just curious when you journal about your father, at the time the, the swelling in your ankle went down your foot. What were yeah. you? What were your journal? Were you releasing grief or anger at that time? Do you remember what it was? Uh, grief, grief. Yeah, grief. it was okay. like, very bluntly. Like uh, I miss him terribly. You know, I, I didn't mince words. It was yeah. uh, very blunt. Um, and yeah, that that was effective. So you, Did know, you have I, any sub crying with it at all, or just more of just pouring out the words? And I mean, a few times occasionally most of the time i didn't really feel the emotion um but i uh, sano had said you just need to you made the recognition uh, to it you, you had the uh, intellectually acknowledge that it exists um, yeah you expressed it though you expressed it by writing it down i did yeah and i i think if, if you are going to go down the journaling or, or therapy route then generally generally speaking um there is more rage and grief and other strong emotions relating to old traumas than you know things that are that are going on currently so expressing yeah. the emotions around those old traumas can a lot of the time be more therapeutic i agree um, yeah yeah the root they're more the root causes yeah so that's fantastic i mean what a what an incredible story you know to came from where you came from and and to turn it around to go from the depths back to your life and then now you know feeling like you want to share the story and maybe tell us a bit about so what's what's born out of what's come out of this recovery you said as you wrote a book about your recovery yeah i've got it right here uh, the mind solution um 
and uh it's yeah it's about my story and there's other there's success stories from other people who've healed autoimmune disease including um Rebecca Tolan. Now, Rebecca's primary diagnosis was chronic fatigue syndrome, but she was also diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Yeah. And um, it's, she's written a tremendous piece for this book. It's it's incredible. Yeah, she's um, an incredible story. You know, really yeah, well, story. work with her and her recovery. And, and she's, a, she's a great writer as well. I mean. Yeah, well, that's her. She's an amazing writer. I mean, that's that was her forte yeah. is the way she writes. So, um, so oh, great. So you so you kind of took that and put that into this book and um. How long did it take you to write the book? Did, how long did you write that over? Well, overall, it took a few months. Um, That's pretty fast. Yeah, I, I've I've written seven and published seven books in the last two years. I don't have much trouble writing the books. The problem I have is promoting them. So yeah. I've, I've got a log jam of books that I need to promote here. Um, yeah, you need, to start, you need your own publishing line. You've got so many books coming out. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think a, a normal publisher would actually be able to keep up with it, but um, yeah, they're all self-published. Um, and yeah, also in the book is um, a lot of science in the back and also some of my ideas about my philosophy on um, yeah. pain and symptoms. And, you know, I kind of took Sano's idea of pain as a distraction from repressed emotions and ran with it and came up with and combined it with the Jungian archetypes and uh, archetypes are um, unconscious inner personalities, I think is the simplest way of describing them. And um, I basically have this idea that the two voices struggle for control of every mind. There's the deceiver and the enlightener and the deceiver dis archetype distracts uh, consciousness via pain and fear and desire um from the unconscious and the truths in the unconscious and the enlightener reveals the truths that dispel the pain so you're lurking beneath the pain is the is the insight that destroys the pain mm -hmm. and that, that was my way of looking at it so whenever yeah. i got a symptom i just kind of think oh it's the deceiver trying to distract me you know i'll just ignore it yeah and yeah it's great it's almost like it's a it's again it's a part of your brain or a third party in there trying to come in and sabotage you or lead you astray yeah, there is a physiological component to it yeah um and um yeah it's um it's like a, like a kind of inner devil figure the deceiver so it's, it's it's a very simple theory it's like having a a little devil and a little angel on your on each shoulder um yeah but you know it, it's it's simple and it, and it helped um so you kind of dismissed it and it, what it sounds like to you is when that came up in its form you kind of just dis dismissed it you recognized it and then said, no, you know, you weren't going to believe that basically. Yeah. I, I, I didn't get afraid. I didn't buy into it. And I didn't buy uh, into it. Yeah. yeah. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, I mean, the common denominator, there's, there's several slightly different philosophies in the field, but the, the common denominator across all of them is um, don't be afraid. Don't panic. When you get a symptom, just don't spiral and catastrophize. I think that really is, you know, that's 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 the big one the secondary the secondary reaction that you don't yeah go down the rabbit hole of that um yeah you're absolutely right did you I have a question for you did you when you were recovering you know and you're starting to go back and do things did you get any uh, upticks did you get any times where uh, other than your foot where things got bad as you were moving forward and it, and you just you had a difficult time or not? Uh, not really it was pretty it was slow but um slow progress but pretty consistent progress it was it was pretty much uphill from there um yeah symptom wise though in your in your body symptom wise uh flare-ups as you're recovering or the symptoms stayed about the same and then or they dropped off quickly there was no real dramatic flare-up um i did have some digestive problems but they, they were relatively minor compared to what had come before let me tell you yeah yeah um so yeah it, it was slow but steady progress and uh, nothing really discouraging happened Part of that could be because I was quite cautious and built up gradually. Um, yeah. So that part too, highlight that part because I know people are trying to get back to their lives. You said built up gradually, so graded exposure. Hey, yeah. Pacing. Hey, pacing. That, yeah. yeah. yeah what, I, how did you structure that for yourself? Uh, just for people listening. Well, yeah. Um, well, basically, when it came time to do something new, like eat a new food or... Um, or do a new exercise or run a bit longer. 
um, I would ambush myself. I wouldn't plan it beforehand. I wouldn't set a goal. I would just kind of on a day when I felt good and felt like doing it, I would just do it with impulsively with no warning. Now mm. I, I saw this as me um, catching the deceiver off guard. Mm, okay. Interesting. Interesting way yeah. to look at it. Um, and there was uh yeah. And that worked very well for me. Um, you just spontaneously kind of just burst forward or move forward at different times. And and then you didn't get a lot of reaction to those moments, or uh, yeah, it, it worked um, most of the time, really. And yeah. uh, I did find that if if I planned something ahead of time and said, you know, out loud, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run a 10k next week, um, you know, I, I'd get hit with more aches and pains. Um, That's the anxiety, and yeah. And also, and especially with the eating as well. Like if I said, oh, I'm gonna have a pizza, you know, tomorrow. I, I could eat the pizza, but I'd get a bit more uh, digestive upset. Than yeah, if it's, it's very interesting, isn't it, with the brain? You give the brain a yeah. little bit of lead time and it will wreak some havoc on you, potentially. Yeah. And yeah, the other thing in this book is a success story from uh, one of my clients. I'm, I do a bit of mind-body coaching. Um, a guy called Ozzy, who's gone public with a success story, so uh, it's okay to talk about it. Um. And uh, yeah, he was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis. So unlike me, he had a confirmed official diagnosis. Mm. And um, he had that for 20 years. He had um, cartilage degeneration visible on scans. He had uh, high inflammation on blood tests. So yeah, he definitely had the disease. And um, after four consultations uh, with me and a, a bit of journaling, um he's made a full recovery that's crazy so he just did four yeah. over what period of time did he uh what period of time did he have for his uh recovery well, it sounds like it was a pretty quick one it was yeah it was under a month under a month I mean, yeah so that shows the potential right i i, I love to hear stuff like that some people get say oh they, they get turned off by that but you have the potential to shift yeah it, it actually can be done quickly. quickly yeah it can be and it but i think in his case, he came to me um, primed because he 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 knew all about Sano and everything. He'd read yeah. all the books, and he was really had a high degree of confidence from day one. So okay, he, so he already he had that in him, which is big. He yeah. came in almost believing, and then you know he saw my success story, and which was linked to ankylosis spondylitis, and my just my example gave him the confidence boost he needed. Yeah, you're like a doctor almost. You set him free. You're like Dr. Sarno, basically, to him, in a way. Well, thank you. I mean, I mean, essentially, you were. I mean, he because you know you had it, you got over it, so he really trusted your advice. Yeah, the, the success stories in these books are, are really part of the Sarno magic um, because you know you you see yourself in the various patients, and um, I mean, right now I don't care too much about uh, diagnoses per se, but. Um, when I was ill and, you know, sick people in general do tend to become identified with the diagnosis. So um, seeing someone who had the same diagnosis, the same symptoms, then they made a complete recovery is really part of that magic. And it can be, it can give you a lot of confidence. Um, a lot of confidence. You're exact, absolutely right. Yeah, because, uh, yeah. yeah, I think diagnosis and prognosis are an integral part of any disease. They're yeah. definitely a part of it. Um, yeah, because something... right from your diagnosis comes comes what you're going to do about it, where where you're headed, which direction, right? It leads to your... Um, yeah, it creates expectations. Yeah. Which can become self-fulfilling prophecies if if you let them. Correct. And Correct. that definitely happened with me. Um, so I think it's important to let people know, you know, that these, it can be done. It can be done. Well, you're living proof of it. And this other guy, Ozzy, he's also living proof that it can be done. And I think that's the key, the confidence. So you also just did your, so your confidence grew, right? As you read that and you started walking more, your confidence grew, I imagine, during this. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, really um, the body just um, symbolically expresses the state of the mind, the unconscious in particular. Yeah. And you know, if, if you do have to go down the journaling therapy route, if you decode the symbol, there's no need for it to exist. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that can be a helpful way of looking at it. And you know, it just it again, this this really applies for the people with more severe cases who feel they need to do some journaling or psychotherapy, but which is not everyone. Um, but if you tend to the soul and the body will take care of itself, you yeah, know, not the other way around. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Soul, mind, body. Yeah. You take care of those other things. Exactly. And it's unconscious too. I think that's important to note that this is, uh, the unconscious at work. Yeah. Uh, it's not the conscious yeah. mind necessarily. Yeah. yeah the unconscious, uh, yeah it's very tricky to know what exactly is going on in there what exactly the the unconscious cause is because you're not aware of it by definition right and i i adopt a very broad definition of the unconscious as being basically everything you're not consciously aware of yeah yeah and that, that does include you know the autonomic system but you know i would say a lot else besides yeah absolutely no yeah anything that's i mean everything running in your system is mostly through the unconscious system. Uh, you know, all your, all your vitals and then all your history too. You, you know, we don't remember everything that's happened to us from even before we were born, but there's a, there's a, that's in there in the unconscious. Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's, it's led this whole um, journey of self-awareness has led me to the point where I now, basically see the body as a school uniform to be discarded once the lessons are complete mm. interesting okay nice way to put a, a vehicle for learning yeah vehicle for learning yeah like you it's like you pick up a paddle with the canoe where the canoe you get across you don't need it anymore to put it down yeah exactly yeah, leave it leave it behind so so coming out of this um how, how i mean you wrote the book which is awesome how has it changed your life uh you know coming no, completely. well the, the the main thing is that i'm not i'm not afraid anymore you know i mean the old me would never have come on a, a youtube show and uh and talk about all this personal stuff i would have been too afraid but you know now now i'm able to do it um largely because of the the sano work i would say yeah that's awesome so it's, it's been a fairly complete transformation yeah, it is. And that it, it's amazing when people get to the other side, like you have, and <clears throat> you can look back on it and say, wow, it is a transformation. It's powerful. You feel more confident, secure, less fearless, right? You're just like, you know, you can handle this stuff now. In a yeah. New way. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's completely liberating. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's also very rewarding to help people get over their symptoms as well. Um. So, you know, if, if anyone um, wants to get in touch, I've, I've got a website, um, robertenser.com, E-N-S-O-R. Uh, just type that into search engine and it should come up. And um, I'll link your we'll, stuff on this on the notes here. That'll yeah. go into the YouTube and I'll link your, your book. I think you sent it to me, a link to your book as well, and then to, also yeah. to your website. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I wanted to have you on because <clears throat> we need more people. You know, I love sharing success stories and sharing this work and knowledge and you know there's really not enough people out there doing this work so um the more people like yourself rebecca she's doing the work now uh it just it just adds we need it we need more people there's not enough people well happy to help i mean if, if you're overworked I could yeah i'm busy that. i'm busy so but uh, you know people i always tell people they'll resonate with your story or they'll gain something from you and they'll want to reach out and chat with you or work with you so you know, it's how, how I leave it for people that everybody will find somebody that's um, yeah. they resonate with to work with. So, yeah, and you're willing to help and your coach. So you're coaching now. You said you're coaching, and yeah. and are is that your main practice now? Coaching or uh, no? I I'm really primarily an author at the moment, and I just do a bit of that on the side um, okay. when I get contacted. Um. Yeah, I'm working on a sequel to the Mind Solution at the moment, and I've got all these books that I need to promote. So I'm I'm going to be on a bit of a <laughs> uh, media blitz promotional campaign. Yeah, well, you got to get it out there. Like today's day and age, with the, with this media and social media, as ways to promote stuff. Well, yeah. awesome. Is there anything else you want to add uh, before we finish up here? Um, no, I, I 
think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to say. Um, oh, one more thing. Um, I think the real turning point for me was this divine bargain I did where I, I, I promised Christ I would spread whatever message he wanted me to spread if I recovered. And um, I, I attribute my recovery to God. And interestingly, Rebecca also made a similar kind of prayer. Um, she prayed, her prayer was, use me as a channel for healing in this world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we both asked and we both received. Exactly. So, you know, if you're really... Higher like self, that spirituality, that, right, that connection. Yeah, if you're really stuck, you know, that's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen that, I've seen that work uh, many a time. So I, I'm glad and, you... Yeah, mentioned. and both both our prayers, um, it was kind of a... It wasn't just to help me out, God. You know, it was like, a, I'll heal to serve God kind of thing. I'll yeah. heal to help others. Yeah, and I think, taking it beyond yourself. It, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so, powerful yeah. because the universe is powerful. And, uh, you know, like they say, asking you shall receive. So yeah. that's fantastic. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm going to pick up a copy of your book as well and have a Please look when I get a chance. I've, I, have a, I have a stack of books sitting here, though, that's about this high that I... Yeah. Need it's to very get, cheap. I get a chance. What's that? It's very cheap. So, yeah, is it, uh, it's on Amazon? On Amazon, yeah. Uh, just type the mind solution into Amazon search and it should come up. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pick up a copy and everybody else out there, you know, um, pick up a copy because I think, you know, this is more information, you know, it's coming from you who've had success. Yeah. And I, I love, just like with Rebecca, um, you know, myself too, getting over things when you can speak from a place that you've been through it, it, it carries some weight to it. I think it carries some uh, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, yeah. You've had your own um, recovery journey as well. And yeah, I think that's part of it. Part of your, it, yeah, big, a big part of it is born out of that, I think. So and you know, your understanding as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I had to write a book because there was so much to cover. It's a very long story. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of had to do that. All right, well, man, well, well, thanks for coming on. I'm glad um, we connected, and uh, like I said, I'll, I'll put your information into the uh, YouTube in the description area if anybody's interested in uh, going to your website, learning more about coaching, or picking up your book. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your story today, Robert. Thanks for having me. It's it's been great. Okay, you're so welcome. I'll see I'll see you next time.